what's up guys, Stiplix here again, welcome back to Men of War Assault Squad 2, and uh, the Rob's, the, not the Rob's, just Rob's Realist mod, welcome back. Uh, I've got a sore throat, um, I've not uploaded a video for a whole week soon, and I'm sorry about that, but I've, uh, I've had some R&R, &R, you know, relax and, uh, recover, what's it called, um, R&R, &R. it's like a military term for, uh, relaxation and, uh, recovery or something, oh, fuck. God damn it, I, 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 uh, I, uh, I botched it. But anyway, um, back here again. That's a good question. What's R&R? &R? Uh, <laughs> this is a stupid question. I'll ask, I'll ask a bigger, bigger, a better, a better question later on. Anyway, back here with a German invasion of Great Britain. It's gonna be pretty cool. I think, uh, th this map, it's not like the one I made ages ago. It could be like, I don't know, southern France. It could even be in Greece somewhere. It doesn't say... Dover to me, but it is cool looking and I really do appreciate it. It's available over in the workshop uh, I've made my own battle and mission for it, and it's not part of a series if you guys want to see like a Fallishim Jaeger uh, air para Paratrooper assault airborne assault kind of thing, you know with them dropping over the map and shit I can make that happen. I think I am Capable I hope and then we could turn it into a two-part series also, of course, I'm continuing the Russian Civil War series. I don't know why I haven't made another video yet. I'm going to. I'm sorry. There's just been a lack of ideas after the, the Russian army kind of took out the militia base. I mean, that would be like a really short series. That would be like a two-part series, and that would be it. And I also want to continue the Russian invasion of Paris with in this kind of like fictional World War III scenario. The problem with the series of mine is that even if we start something and don't finish it, we'll always come back to it at a later point. We have done so many different World War III scenarios since... I'm going to click start so that we get this thing going, because otherwise we're never going to start it. We've done so many World War III series um, since, since like, three years ago, like, different editions, you know? We've started and finished and started and finished and started and finished. They all kind of just, like, merge into one big blob of confusion. Like, wh which, which World War III series is this? Oh, and wait, which... Futuristic is this, and no, and which is blah blah blah, you know, no, what kind of World War Two series is this? So is this in relation to your other Pacific series? Oh, is this a new Pacific series, and blah blah blah. Ah. Uh. In the future, I really should be more like a movie producer kind of thing. When you finish a whole series before you upload it, right? God damn it! Because <laughs> otherwise, if there's loose ends, and if I haven't got all the episodes ready, I don't really know when I'm gonna end it or when I'm gonna be able to upload the next video. We've got the German Kriegsmarine on the way, and I think that's a bit much better topic. And pause. This deserves a pause. A pause. Um, my German Hellmarch video is down, right? YouTube didn't take it down. I took it down for one reason. It was demonetized, but that's not why I took it down. I took it down because the swastikas were counterclockwise. They were facing the wrong direction. And to me, that's a huge pet peeve. It's like... Come on, it's it's not historically accurate. I'm sitting there saying I don't give a shit about YouTube and the demonization, demonetization and censorship and whatnot. Um, and I don't really. I mean, it's a hell march. Hell marches are supposed to be cool. They're supposed to be frightening. They're supposed to show the tyranny of it all. They're not supposed to glamorize it because, truth be told, that the Germans were pretty, you know, uh, focused on making their marches uh, somewhat spectacular and tyrannical and glamorized with their... Have you ever seen real footage of a German military parade during World War II or like an NSDAP parade? They're insanity, human insanity. But anyway, holy shit, look at that. The landing has begun. So I might remake one with the correct facing swastika, so to speak, for the, for the full uh, historical accuracy, also improve frame rate and do a few other things. But let's focus on the battle at hand here. First wave has landed. We've also got some armor hitting the beaches. And, oh, looks like we've seen a few trucks explode here. We've got Vickers in the bunkers. We have an MG position down here as well. And there's explosions on the beach as well. We've got British mortars suppressing the uh, German infantry attacking. Look at this. This is spectacular. Up here we have a 20 mil and two more Vickers. All going to work here on the German war machine. The Kriegsmarine. Attacking and the Kriegsmarine is, is just the uh, the Navy, of course. We'll have a look at their uniforms later on as well. Let's uh, let's land some engineers. Engineers. So 
these are like Sturm Pioneer, yeah? There's few... Uh, there's just like six per boat, but they also arrived with the tanks. Right now we have uh, little to no infantry remaining. Actually, we have about a... I'd say 10%, 15% survived that first wave, and right now they're kind of battling here together with the armor. Look at them ex exchanging the fire here. We need heavier armor, sir. I'm not gonna get into my German voices. With me, uh, a German and Russian uh, voice sometimes gets too similar. Like I've, I've, uh, when I start screaming and I get really loud, I lose the fine line between a German officer and a Soviet officer, so to speak. But let's uh, land more of the infantry. Look at all the boats coming up here. Mortars are still being dropped on the beach. I'm gonna be kind of in charge of the armor as well. Uh, just to make sure they get to the right spot. Look at that. Some Panzer III's. Early war Panzer III's. In our fictional German invasion of uh, Britain. Um, uh, the... Uh, this it, I kind of lost my tongue there for a second. Uh, I forgot what I wanted to say. In this fictional scenario, the invasion takes place in 1940. Or early 41. So lots of early war equipment here. Some early Panzer III's and whatnot. So... Don't get too confused with the equipment. Also some good old Panzer IIs here. Riding some fire. We also have this interesting British... Oh, fuck. I haven't logged out of Steam. VLSS. Very talented Men of War Assault Squad 2 modder. He makes a lot of cool vehicle mods and whatnot. So, And that guy, I don't know. But here's some... <laughs> Whoever shows up playing will get a cool little shout out. <laughs> oh, man. The question of today's video, something I'd rather have you answer than what is the meaning of R&R? &R? Oh wait, oh wait, no, I thought I thought we missed out on some people. Well, we're getting closer to the beach now, and I think the Panzer III's destroyed that British armor, yeah? It has a 14mm gun, which is more powerful than a 50 cal. But very devastating. Oh boy, we're still, we're still need to capture this possession, sir! Listen, the flamethrowers won't do it themselves. I need to ask Robs why flamers don't actually flame themselves. But I'm gonna take this guy, I'm gonna torch this bunker. And also the grass next to it. That is so cool. Is he burning in there? I, I hope he is. I mean, that sounds pretty uh, horrible, but yeah. Oh, that 20 mil is finally down. There's still some Brits holding over here. Oh, shit! The reinforcements have just arrived as well. Third wave. We're landing over 300 men here today. 300 men. We're we we've landed like two companies, three companies so far. It's fantastic. Manpower is great. Numbers are awesome. And this game is life. No, but for real, it, it's it's a pretty fantastic experience. So we're sending another company ashore, even a little more, I'd say. How's that armor doing? Well, we're moving up. Two Panzer threes are active. What's up with our... I think these need repair. This one's completely... Completely destroyed. But so back to the question of the video. When do you think Germany would have been able to carry through a successful invasion of Britain after a Dunkirk scenario? So the Royal Navy would beat the, 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 the German uh, Navy at the time. And the Royal Air Force um, also did beat the German Air Force at the time. So Germany's tactic was to first try and battle uh, the Royal Air Force to win the Battle of Britain to after having secured the um, the air so to speak they could focus on bombarding the Royal Navy and also uh, because in the end a real full scale invade full scale invasion can only be carried carried out uh, by the sea not air I mean sure you could drop fall chain makers all over Britain but uh, you know equipment and supplies would be limited so uh, you definitely want secure sea routes as well, and uh, the Kriegsmarine would, in the end, have to be superior, or otherwise the Royal Navy would have to be inferior to whatever the Germans would use to counter it, so to speak, the Luftwaffe or the Kriegsmarine. So uh, let me know if you think um, that could have been done. So Karl Dönitz replaced Admiral uh, Raider in 1943, and he went with a submarine doctrine, which was great for, obviously, attacking supply convoys and destroying ships and whatnot, but not capable of that proper naval warfare or that large scale. So many people blamed Dönitz and, and called him a fool for, for you know, going for the, the submarines um, 
submarine uh, doctrine instead of focusing on uh, battleships and whatnot that they had used previously. All right. Anyway, we're not going to get into too much of an historical discussion. I need more of a uh, a better foothold in in German naval history before I start talking about that. I think we've dropped all the pioneers off, right? Cool. Now the rest is the battle up here. We have a a gun shooting us. That's worrying. Let's uh, control the armor. Let's get these guys up. Where did my other Panzer III go? That one's stuck down there. Oh, it's it's lost its tracks. Let's get some repairs going here. He's repairing, and they're both repairing. Oh, well, we're not in such a bad shape after all. And have we taken out that uh, field gun? Yes, that Vickers is destroyed. And a Panzer III will be rolling up over the hill. We have a 25-pounder back here. Beautiful howitzer. Classic British. Oh, it's shelling us good. And we also have a Vickers, and we have more positions. So we kind of knew the invasion was coming, but we mostly have home guard and uh, soldiers arriving from Dunkirk uh, with limited equipment. Um, a lot of our assets, or a lot of the British assets, are overseas. Of course, in Africa and other places. You know, the British Empire was a rather big, <laughs> big empire at the time. So lots of territory had to be held against all enemy powers all over the world. Is that howitzer trying to direct hit this Panzer III? It's not a bad idea. I think at the time, the armor is too weak. We have some two-pounders back here in nicely deployed positions. And we're going to get a static view here of what is this British defense. Look at that Bren gun with the, uh, the bipod down on the ground. Opening fire at the German infantry moving up over the dunes. And this two-pounder shelling as well. That is so cool. I love this. But it's interesting to, to, to imagine or fathom it. I think the attacking... I mean, when they realized they couldn't move west, Germany uh, or Hitler turned his eyes to the east. And uh, so the war on the Eastern Front began against the Soviet Union, of course. But what if he had waited? What if he had not? I think, of course, I mean, it makes sense. Germany would have outproduced Great Britain, especially uh, a Great Britain without a, uh, a stable France and without the U.S. of A. as, as, as allies. Because if the U.S. were allied with the, the Brits in, in the 40s and 40, or early 40s and, you know, like 1941 and whatnot, um, perhaps Britain could have uh, received supplies and, uh, you know, uh, naval support from the U.S. since Germany is not in between uh, the U.S. and, and uh, Britain. They wouldn't be cut off, so to speak. But a Britain without the Soviet Union engaged in the war, um, sooner or later they would have had to succumb to a, to a successful German invasion. You're kind of very limited when you're we're on when you're on a, uh, an island like that. Um, there's food shortages and whatnot else, and trade was limited because Germany could uh, cover the entire coast with their submarines. The Germany had a better submarine navy, but once again, that uh, surface fleet um, would be inferior to the the Royal Navy at the time. But obviously, with time, as I'm saying, like if you had given Germany another year or two years, I, I definitely think they could have outproduced. Um, and won in a war of attrition against the British. But that's just an interesting topic. Like, I'm not weighing in any major historical uh, factors into that. I, I'm simply just speaking out of my heart. And I'm noticing my sore throat is not failing me, but it's it's starting to, to say, Hi, <laughs> I'm sore. Yeah, the place, you remember? And now we haven't talked about the battle in a while. We've just been enjoying the beautiful scenery here. Let's take a look at this Bren gun. Oh, he's dead. And he, he, we're not looking at the brain gun, we're looking at... Ooh, hand grenade. Kriegsmarine are successfully attacking the area now. They're, they're breaking it down. There's a few soldiers here hiding behind the trucks. These are all like home guard men. But they uh, they did good. Look at that. Panzer three knocked out. Two Panzer fours have been repaired and are roaming the beach. But that I don't know where that Panzer three went. Two? No, that one's knocked out as well. But it, let's take a look at casualties before... We wrap this one up. Good bloody fight. Look at the German casualties are uh, very numerous here. Uh, German casualties will mark them in red and will mark the Brits in yellow. It's just been a slaughter down here on the beach. But what? This battle's been going on for what? Like 10 minutes? 15 minutes? And uh, 300 Germans have died. I don't think there's... I think we landed about 360, 380 or so. And I'd say there's not more than 60 to 80 alive. Ah, oh, there could be a little bit more, but uh, come on. We're looking at at least 250 men dead here. That's crazy. 
good stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed this uh, battle, and I will see you guys in a upcoming video. We've got plenty more on the way. I'm recovering, and it's so nice to be back here, and I'll see you guys soon again. Ciao.